Hello everyone and welcome to Learning Techniques. This is your host Hemant and today we are going to set up VMware Hypervisor also known as ESXi on my lab system. So I'm deploying it over a VMware workstation so you can consider it as a nested virtualization type and for that you do not need a hefty hardware for a independent deployment of ESXi. So for my setup, I have like a Nocta core system with 32 GBs of RAM in my desktop and I can run multiple machines on that. So let's move to our setup section and deploy our first ESXi. So I have the ESXi image ready with me. Let me just quickly browse over it. I'm using the latest image, so seven. Uh, you can download the images from the VMware official page. You can create a free account and download the images from there. Without a license, this image is valid for 60 days. So let me choose the hardware type. So till now in this workstation version 15, we do not have any specific hardware requirement for seven. So we are using the six .x over here and just give a name to it. So I'm giving it a six I one. For sake of purpose, I'm just going with the default settings of 40 GB local hard disk. Now let me change some hard disk because uh, let me add an additional hard disk because I want to also show you the data store thing at a later point. So as of now, uh, I can see it is not providing me an option to add an extra hard disk. So let's do it later. Till now, let me just update the network settings and so that it would be accessible over my local network. You have to choose this network according to your environment. The processor is fine, memory is fine. And let me finish it. So we have empty, uh, you can say container or a VM template. So now let's power on it and start with the deployment. So now it will start loading the files from the ISO images, uh, various configuration files and the booting files. So with power of editing, I'm just pausing this video and uh, we'll move for some extra further section where it requires some more information. So now the required files are loaded. So it's uncompressing uh, some modules and loading on my kernel. So you can notice that uh, the ESXi version is 7.0.2 and uh, it's checking the required hardware, which we have provided to it. It's loading some networking and other modules which be required for a hypervisor action, basically. So it mainly comprises of um, OS para virtualization and uh, networking and storage type of modules. Meantime, it's starting the services. Let's try to add one extra desk uh, if it's allowing us now. So let me try to add a hard disk. Yes, I can, now I can see an hard disk option. Let's add an additional hard disk. That two of around 20 GB is fine. We simply want to make a data store. So. Now we landed to a page where we have to start performing the installation and configuration options. So let me accept the EULA, press F1 in your system and continue. Now it will scan for whatever available devices you have added to the container. In your physical hardware system, basically it will look for whatever peripherals and other devices attached to it. So now it will provide me option on which disk I want to add my, or install my operating system basically. So. As of now, it's able to see only one disk, so I'll proceed with that only. If you have multiple disks attached to your system and if they are visible during the booting time, you have to wisely select that disk, otherwise it will wipe out all the data which is on that disk. So let's proceed now, proceeding and enter. Now the basic language defaults, provide a password.
this is your administrator password. So note it somewhere with you. Now it's saying that uh, we might got some CPU support warnings. So that can be due to the release, latest release, bring latest things. So this may not be supported in the further releases. So I believe as of now it should work. So now let's confirm the installation and proceed. So it's a quick procedure. It will uh, install the ESXi. So now installation is completed from our end. So let's uh, proceed with the option of removing the installation media and then reboot the system. Press and enter. And now it's rebooting the system for you. It may take a few minutes. Till now, then I'm just pausing the recording. So now our system is uh, fully installed and it's working. So let's configure the basic settings. So here you can see um, two options like F2, you can customize your system or you can see the logs and with the F12, you can restart your system. So let's quickly do a F2. Now it will ask you for the password, which you have entered earlier. We have entered the password. Now it will, uh, password is already set. So if you want, you can change it. Now you can configure the management network. So let's press enter and go inside. Let me select an static IP address, 110, and that's fine with me. IPv6 is not required, DNS configuration. Let me provide my custom DNS server so that it won't cause any issues. And the host name will be ESXi1 so that it will be accessible with name. Let's change some suffixes, add my required suffix. Cool, so network settings we have also done. Now just exit it, it will ask that if, if you confirm, it will restart the management network for you. So I press a yes. Okay, uh, let's test the management network as well, if it's accessible or not. So just press on okay, and it will tell you whether it's able to perform the gateway ping, DNS ping and host name resolution or not. So things are looking good. Now, just for better management purpose, though the ESXi or VMware do not recommend it, but they put it inside the troubleshooting options. Still, I would say enable your ESXi shell if you are a shell lover so that you have a much better control. Just press an internet shell is enabled. Now just press an internet SSH is also enabled. So required stuff is done. So let's quickly move to a putty session and see if we are able to access to well over a CLI.